we do not have a crystal ball. But then again, you know, all those people reading crystal ball are tech people. Now, because economies or social science, if you like, or business, it's very, very hard to predict, unlike science. Now, if, if you were to predict the rate of a farm growth, it's pretty straightforward because you could build an artificial environment with fertilizer, if you like, but not, not in dealing with humans. Now, unfortunately, a lot of economics models are built on stupid assumption, silly assumption that they assume that everyone is rational, everyone is the same. Now, if that is true, predicting the future will be very, uh, very, very simple. Now, again, if everyone is rational, the future would be a much, much smoother, if you like. We, do not, we would not have this situation where, if you believe in what the economist magazine is saying, that the income disparity between the rich and the poor is so large, that it's unbelievable in the sense that one percent of the world population controlling ninety-nine percent of the world global wealth. If you believe in what the economist is saying, now that will give you a clear indication that humans are not rational. They allow that majority, ninety-nine percent of those people there, are really, really not rational. Why? Because simple fact that they allow the one percent to get away with it. You know, taking the wealth, greed, if you like, things, things like that. Now, because it is very, very difficult to predict, I'll, I'll give you two extreme view on the future of prosperity. Right? So, that two extreme view. One is, one extreme is that we are living in La La Land. This is the best country to live at this point in time. Now, if you go to Europe, it's in the US. In Spain, unemployment is 25%, compared to 5%, around 5.5% in, in Australia. In France, up that you will see that most probably this summer time, you will see people will start burning cars, if, if you like. Now, because now it's still cold, it's, it's still cold, people might stay at home or what? So summer will, will be different. Now, in other parts of the Unemployment is very, very high. Getting a job is shockingly difficult in, in most parts of, of Europe, if, if, if you like. Now, talk this. Japan is in recession for the last 25 years. Not one year, not two years, but 25 years. Which means that a generation of Japanese do not know what we, uh, or how do you say, what boom time is, if, if you like. Now, in Australia, we are very, very lucky because in the last 30 years, we enjoy booming. We mean, the, your generation, your, your, your generation, never experienced recession before, is it not the case? Never have the word recession. So it, it's, it, it's good time. Now, what about the, the future view? You know, it's good. If you read the Australian, you watch Today Tonight, you watch the TV, we are in good times, no, no dramas, why? Because of the economic miracle happening in our neighborhood. China, for instance, is driving. If you believe in what the newspaper has in that world, as long as China is growing, we'll be fine. Right? They'll buy more mining product, or mining product will employ more people, and those people will spend more. Things, things like that. Now, what I want you guys is to challenge me. Now, you, you guys buy it right now. That it's fine. Everything is fine. Now, there is a prediction yesterday from the IMF saying that growth in Australia will pick up, maybe slightly, but compared to other countries, we are the top. We are not on the top three, the, the top of the OECD countries. So, should be no worries. China is our number one trading partner. Japan is our second trading partner. What more do you want? Like if you believe in what the mining sector they say that they could not be in big enough holes to supply the Chinese. So 
China is growing as much as they tell us? Because how many of you guys are from China? None. You could never trust a Chinese speaker. <laughs> <laughs> other countries when you collect data for GDP growth, right? In, in the sense of, let's, let's say, it is always divided into a quarter, four quarters in, 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 in a particular year. Now, if in Australia the ABS were to report the GDP growth for September, you wouldn't get that figure until it's December or January, most probably in January. Right? To get so that they could collect all the data and put up the real GDP growth. How about you get real GDP growth? You gotta aggregate everything up, the public spending, spending, the private spending, you going to the supermarket and buy your food, your cars, whatever. You need time to, to collect that because it's messy. So you got like 15 million people doing transactions in Australia. Now you think about this. In China it might be Five billion people, five billion people doing the transaction. Compared to Australia, about 15 billion. That's a small section, right? Now, let's say the Chinese were to report the GDP growth for September. Now, they will report that GDP growth in the middle of September. Now, will you believe that? Totally ridiculous. It, 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 it's not the case. But why do we accept this? Well, we know that if they're doing well, I mean, they're building cities all the time, they're expanding all the time, they're always in surplus. We, we might not have the actual figures, but we do know that it's doing well. The word surplus there, how, how, how many of you think that the Chinese has actually a huge saving as a surplus? That is precisely why they could build a lot of things. Like, like how, how many of you guys would believe that the Chinese have a huge surplus? Have a guess, you guys. Because it was news. You guys will believe that? Why? Because the newspaper says so. It's not the case. The popular press will report, report this. The amount of saving, you will always get the myth that the Chinese would want to borrow heaps of money to the Americans to consume. Right? And you could see that Chinese money coming into Australia to buy. But unfortunately, you will, you will be shocked if I tell you this China is the number one. The number one country on the planet now has heaps of debt. The debt of the Chinese government is about 200% of GDP. Uh, th th this is not, not, not my data, the World Bank data. So the, the debt is 200%, almost 200% GDP. Have a guess which, which is the second country that has the second highest debt on the planet? USA? Yes. Japan. Japan. Japan is the number two. Number three is US. Is that just percentage terms or actual like real figures? Yeah, real figures. That, that is almost twice the GDP. That's very, very high. Now, if Australia would have 100% of GDP in there, people would jump up and down. Now, have a guess. Well, what's the, the government debt on, on Australia? Opportunity. It's about 40%? 20%? 15? 5 0? No, 1 5. 15. Yeah, about that. Less than that. Maybe 13, maybe 14. It depends on the, the, the budget. We, 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 we are not in that. Partly maybe because we are in La La Land now. It, it, it's, it's good, right? It's not like 15% of GDP. That's nothing compared to 200%. So, from that perspective, in Australia we have an unemployment rate of 5.2, 5.3%, maybe 5.5%, depends on the figure, depends on how they're, they're weighted at the end of the year. You will not more than 
you've got inflation less than 3%, you've got a government debt of, of only 15% max, we should be in La La Land. Compared to other parts of the world. What do you guys reckon? Yeah, but
somewhere in the, the lunar, been over there. Now, they produce a lot. They only have 900 workers in, in producing. Most of their trucks are the GPS coordinated because they cannot afford to have a truck guy driving and proper an entire truck truck, which not only cost $3 million to replace, but it would take six months to build from America. If you know, to ship from America, they would not take that lease. So everything is highly controlled. Now, if you could not. Now, there, there is a, a, a fact that the Australian sampling would pay the people from Sydney, Adelaide, and Melbourne $10,000 for them to locate, move, you understand, know, unemployed people to move from Melbourne or Sydney or Adelaide, come to Australia to go up the mine. So they give them $10,000 money to buy the plane ticket or book a truck to work. Do you know why is they take up rate from the other side of the, the other side of, in Sydney, in Melbourne, and Adelaide, that they get? 2%? Less than 5 Now, if it is so easy to have a job, right? You guys are not rational at all. You should have leave this room, forget about this degree, go up to mine, and earn 200 grand a year. That, that's what the meat is saying. The, meat, the big meat is saying, there are plenty of jobs. But all those are rubbish. And the scary part about mining, if there is a tiny downturn, they will sack a lot of people very quickly, very rapidly. That's just one issue. Mining sector are meat. They do not contribute much. Coming back to the question is, we worry about, like, like you raised the issue, that what if suddenly Africa or South America get their act together and start producing, producing raw material to China, that will shake Australia, is it not the case? It might be true, but then again, Unfortunately for Australia, maybe fortunately for, for the mining sector, right? We Australians are the most productive, the best on the planet to digging holes. No other country could be doing this. So that, 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 that issue we don't have to worry for the next 30 years because we are so good at digging holes, despite the high cost, despite the high wages, they could make heaps of money. China will grow in the next 40, 50 years. Now, surely, we would also ride on that boom. What the guys like that? And because of that, we will have our living standard will prolong for another 40 years. You guys buy that again. Isn't China going to turn into a consumer-based economy? Aren't they going to make their own things, sell to their own people? I totally agree. I agree with you. Right? Now, it is not, not really good a, a policy that you focus on external. Now, if you have some flu in Europe, right, that will have an impact. So you try to isolate your, your, your economy, right? You drive it from domestic consumer. Totally agree with you, but unfortunately, order for a country to be driven by consumption, you need a per capita income of approximately forty thousand US dollars. Doesn't China have like a lot of poor people? Like in comparison to the um... no, 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 hundred percent. In China, the wealth is concentrated on one percent of the population. Yeah. That will be the party, top-ranking party. Yeah, so all those other people can't afford to consume. Precisely. Now, in order to consume, right, like we do in Australia, or better still, like the Americans do, right, we live in style dining debt, if you like, in order to consume that kind of money, we need $40,000. Now, Chinese per capita income depends on which, which figure you look, right? I'll, I'll give it the most is 2,500 a year US. 
in, in Australia, we, we have like approximately 50,000 US dollars per year. Now, simple arithmetic will tell you that if per capita income increased by 2%, 3% every year, how long, average, how long would it take all the Chinese economy to arrive at the consumption standard of the Americans? A, a long time, but isn't that missing the point that, that because there's like 1.3 billion of them, it doesn't really matter if there's, say, 600 million poor people, you've still got 700 million people that maybe aren't in that category. No, 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 I, I, I totally agree with you. But unfortunately, it is, every time you look at it, if you are rich now, let's say you go up there and you earn $500,000 a year, now that 1% people, like you say, a billion people, some of them are super, super wealthy. Now, Let's, 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 let's take, take my case for instance. I assume that I am rational. Let's say tomorrow I earn ten thousand dollars. I will never buy a Holden or a Toyota. I want to buy a Porsche. That's not not what we would like Australia. So that's not how they come up, right? And I will want to buy a Swiss watch because Swiss watch that must have watch. Not only that, it increased my spending. You get, you get what I mean? Like I said this level, I'm telling you that hey, I am up there now. Things, things, things like that. A, a lot of those, well, general would not go into the country itself. I do not care what, what people say, that they will buy those kind of, of product if, if, if you like. That's, that's one. Sorry. But don't you think um, we have some companies from the US which have headquarters in US but have their production line in China? And that by having people working there, they still have money? Uh, based on that, it will take many, many years to, to, to go. The US interested in China for two reasons. If you believe what the traditional literature is saying, that they are cheaper. And if I have money, I will go to China to deal my factory for, for one reason. What is a lawyer? Because they are brought up that way. You know, in, 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 in those kind of regions, you follow the leader. If you, you don't try to be smart, those kind of things, you have a lawyer look at, you, you will do that. But from my point is, majority of the people that would like to spend money could not, in the sense that if you take four, 50,000 and 2005, for them to reach a right at that end, it will take you at least 250 years. If we assume income increase 2% a year, things, things like that, it will take a long time. Yeah? And that, you based on the very, very strict assumption saying that the US is not going to grow anymore, or Australia not going to increase their per capita income, you, 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 you assume that these OECD countries have died. Income will boom for the next 250 years. Look, I, 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 I'm just giving you the other side of the story. These are not my view, so, so I'm not attacking countries, I'm just telling you the, the story of numbers. Things like that. Now, on a global scale, the thing is, China is not doing too, too well. Classic example is what you see in the last. 30, 40 years, China start to build infrastructure, right? It start to invest into people, it start expanding over time. Now, once you build buildings, you build factory, you cannot turn it overnight, it takes time. It might take 20 years, it might take 30 years, they start building. Now the big question is, once the dust has settled, way too, what are you going to do? Now, classic example will be in Japan. When Japan has built all the bridges, the roads they want, way to move on. So they, they are basically in limbo, in recession for 25 years. What? Where do you find the next round of economic growth? If you like? Research and development? Pardon? Research and development? I 100% agree with you. I 100% agree with you. Technology, if you like, could bring that down. In the 2000, in year 2000, now, all this economy in America, or they are struggling now, right? It, it could be that they have plowed in very, very little money in research and development, if you like. Now, if we think that technological progress is the key to growth, right? Or 
Australia that has not had a good teacher. For second example, it, the federal government just allowed a very, very huge cut on the university. And in the university side, where do you cut? First is you do less research because research are expensive. So things, things like that. But research in development is crucial. But how do we find where, what type of technology will propel the, the new world, if you like? Now, the motor car once did, the radio once did, the television one once, once did, right? Now, the big problem is in 2000, we, between 1990 and 2000, we thought that the next technology is going to bring the world up to the next level because we are still stuck in the 1950s level because all of the precious technology that have propelled us are done at the even before 1950s, if you like, the computer is nothing new. It's developed in the 1910, if you like. It's just that now they have refined it to make it cheaper. Digital is nothing new. It's 100 years old. Digital just means you switch and off, switch on and off, on and off, that's digital. That's, that's nothing. That was done many, many years back. What we do is we make it cheaper, we, we refine it better. Now, between 1990 and 2000, we thought computers were going to drive us. So we have people pouring heaps of money into NASDAQ. You know, then we have a big bubble of the dot-com bubble. It burst, so it went out of favor. Now, the scary thing is, we now thought that the internet is going to drive the world to a new era. You guys agree with that? We, we actually believe that. One thing is, we value Facebook much, much higher than General Motors. Now, I'm not, not sure. Before Facebook was new listed, they say that Facebook is worth $75 billion. The big question is, if Facebook is worth $75 billion, now surely there must be huge opportunity to channel new technology. Is it not the case? Well, the guys will record. But unfortunately, the next day when it is the, the, the share price drop because people realize that all those hype that has been driven. Now, how many of you guys believe that actually companies like Facebook, like Google, will bring us to a new level? No one can figure out how to monetize Facebook at the moment. Pardon? No one can really figure out how to monetize Facebook at the moment. Like, they're saying it's worth $75 billion. Yeah. Only no, 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 those are, I call lala money. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They, they pluck up from out of north. But the more crucial thing is, forget about the value. Now, can technology like Facebook, Amazon, or all those kind of things, push the, 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 the global growth to another level? Or a technology to another level? No. Maybe I'm wrong because I'm not an IT guy. No, because they don't produce enough jobs. They employ a lot of people. That's one thing. And also another thing is, you, you suppose technology would be useful, that would create something new. Look, if you take the Facebook, it's all rubbish, 90% of them. It's all what I'm teaching about you. And you look, you know, you know, as you were yesterday, previous, you know, no, I don't. I don't really uh, agree on that. Okay, this is my personal opinion, yeah. and uh, I tend to think I look at Facebook as an opportunity it gives give business to grow, like to sell. It's an opportunity for marketing, and but it makes things a little bit quicker to reach the market rather than to use. Them. No, I hundred percent with you. Hundred percent. The the Facebook or the computer shockingly good for 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 selling stuff. Right? You, because it's almost close to the economic heaven, you allow people to choose. You could Google between the price, and that will create a lot of competition. That's why Jerry Harvey did not like online business. He accused that people take away his business, if you like, because it's, it's open, it's transparent. If, if you, you just compare prices, you could do that. But unfortunately, if you do not have new product, how do you put it on a Facebook? That's the thing. We arrived at the situation now. It's also, a, 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 you also look at it as another way of collecting ideas from different people to develop something. I totally agree with you. The government will say that you are brilliant.
because we just spent about 90 billion of taxpayer money in the broadband network so that we could faster the speed of exchange of ideas if you like. Right? They've actually done a study where it's been shown that um, scientists who work within 30 feet of each other are actually much more productive yeah. than yeah. when they're communicating across. Yeah, yeah. So according to the, the guy who won the Nobel Prize, he's also the guy who developed a very, very influential growth model, arguing that if you want higher growth, the only key there, the key ingredient to try is new technology. Without new technology, growth will stagnate, if you like, right? Now, he said that computer is everywhere, but there are no research, substantial research, to prove that computer actually increases productivity, but there are many, many research to prove that computer actually decreases productivity. Like that. Yeah. Not really true. Because after the instructions, you go into the great book, they have no issue and go into No, 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 I, 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 I'm not, 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 not agreeing on those. Those are 100% that it makes our life easier and it's cheaper. You know what I mean? Now, without computer, you can't travel cheap, cheaply. That's, that's the thing. But what I'm asked, what I'm worth agreeing on. <coughs> Where is the new technology going to come from, if you like, to propel? Look, the 1950s technology is gone. We have reached the top of it. The car is the most efficient now. What, how else do, do you make the car more efficient? You make the car, the first car and the, same, the car now are almost the same. It has four wheels, but it runs on a key piston combustion engine, it's just that over years we learn how to refine it, right? Refine, refine, refine it. Now, that has reached almost the max now. How else will you extract extra power from an engine? God knows. Uh, until to the point that because the American and the, the EU country demanded that every car manufacturer, if you want to sell it in the EU as well as America, you must have set your, your average mileage of the car must be this much. Your average, uh, how do you say, exhaust emission must be this much. If not, you can't put it on the market. So the car manufacturer themselves know that the engine has reached its maximum capacity. What else will you do? So you have Aston Martin, for instance, buying a small Toyota car and rematch it themselves so that they could work out the average. You, you, you know, it comes to the point on that because you have reached the ultimate thing. Same thing with your, how do you say, your, your mobile phone or whatever. It, it has almost reached the peak. There, there's nothing more to push. The only push that you can see is on the margin, like your Apple iPhone, you could do this now. But come back to the real point is, it's for you to call the internet. Now the next round of TV, you could talk to the TV, press the button and say, oh, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you look at that, right? What they're trying to do is just to sell another margin, another margin of TV. You know the TV is a TV, because nobody else is buying TV. Now the, the TV industry is in deep, deep, deep shit, if you like, of overproduction. What, what I mean overproduction is, go to Harvey Norman, go to any, any store, right? Why do we need 60 different models producing the same thing? You just click on it. It looks the same even, isn't it? Yeah? It, it, it used to look some sort of like a square. Now they have this white screen. That's about it. Maybe they change the colors of, of the, 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 yeah, just to, to suit the decor. Now, the big question is, where do we find our new technology? Drive go another round. So we, we could see that it is clear, it's crystal clear because growth in all those developing developed countries has been stagnant. It's flat, it's plateaued. Now you'll be lucky for Australia in the future, in the next